Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Apple Valley Disc Golf League Final Nine, where the top three point getters in each division face off on a safari version of the course to see who takes home all the marbles for 2019. Today, we're going to be following the open card, and on the card, we have Mr. Luke Wessel, Scotty Bugash, and Mr. John Stone. The open card starts on hole five of the safari course. You have to throw uphill to a tiny gap. As you can see, the fairway is littered with bushes and trees to the left and the right. And as you get down the fairway, you've got a dog leg to the left in the basket on a sloping green. This is a treacherous starting hole for sure. First on the tee, we have Luke Wessel. who Looks like he's trying to throw a little bit of a flex shot. Here's the gap beautifully, but there is the trouble as the disc fades out to the left, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what he has for a second shot. Now a resident lefty, Scotty, throws his, actually crashes through the tree barrier on that left-hand side, and it fades to the center of the fairway. My goodness, talk about luck. Uh, John Stone looks like he's going to try to do the same thing, but on the right, and unfortunately does hit a tree and gets caught up in it all. And it looks like next to nothing for Stone, so he's just got to try to pitch out. Unfortunately, he does find the left-hand side rough. Luke uh, Hartzell looks like probably um, some kind of like a, maybe a forehand. Unfortunately, clipped a bush or a tree and is unfortunately still in the rough. Scotty had the beautiful drive, and as you can see, he has a nice open look right to the basket, takes advantage. We'll see how far that actually rolled down that hill. Now Stone lining up, it looks like a, a thumber of some kind or a forehand. That was actually a good tree right there. That thing was going down towards a pond that's actually behind the basket. That probably saved him an extra like OB stroke. Luke trying to get something around that corner and it just didn't have enough on it, faded out. Luke is a dangerous downtown shooter here for putts. Just came up a little bit short. And Scotty with the jumper nails it to save his par. So now we see Stone trying to line up that bogey putt. Oh, just off the side of the cage. That will unfortunately be a double bogey to start the final nine for Stone. An unfortunate double bogey for Luke as well. On to hole six. A very short uphill, just dog legs ever so slightly to the right. Uh, for Scotty, just should be an easy hyzer. For Luke and uh, Stone, should just be either simple forehands or gentle turnovers. Uh, this is Scotty, and put his just a little bit long, maybe about 15, 20 feet deep. Now, Luke, there looks like the turnover line, and just like Scotty, probably about uh, 15 feet deep. Stone opting for the forehand, floats it up there nicely, just about 15 short of the basket. This is a big putt to get back on track for Stone after taking that double bogey five. Cans it. There is the birdie. This is by far one of the easiest holes on the course, so definitely expecting a star frame here. Luke, no trouble at all. Great bounce back for both, for both Luke and Stone. And Scotty with the simple tap in. Yep, count it. And that is a two. Great start for Scotty. Now, on to hole seven, where you've got to clear about 175, 200 feet for a pond. Then you've got a narrow gap, which opens up to the fairway with a slight dog leg to the right. Good for a lefty, and Scotty just missed the gap, and it bounced back. Hopefully, that did stay in bounds. Luke throwing what looks like a flex shot, but got it over a little too much and a little too low, and that catches the side of the hill. It'll be interesting to see what kind of shot he has from there. And Stone, oh gosh, that's leaking out early from Stone, and that's going to be way off to the side in the left-hand rough here. There was a little confusion on who was throwing next. Uh, Stone ended up just clipping that last tree, and that's going to make for a tough par save. Scotty was safe. Hard to see where his disc ended up there, but I think it was just about 15, 20 feet short of the basket. Luke now lining up a thumber or a tomahawk up and over everything and puts it down pretty close within, I definitely within the circle, say probably within about 20, 25 feet. Stone, simple approach, got his right behind the basket. 
And yep, Scotty was a little bit short, about 15, 20 feet. No problems whatsoever. Good par putt there. Luke to scramble and save his par. Yes, just gets it over. Great putt. Now we got Stone, who's just going to tap in. Unfortunately, I believe that is going to be a bogey for Stone, dropping him another stroke. Hole 8 is another must-get, just a nice, simple downhill, slight dogleg over to the left. There is a basket on top of that one, though. Trust me. All right, so we got Scotty first. Oh, look how smooth that forehand comes out. Oh, do it. Do it! <laughs> oh, so close. Luke, nice, just nice height. A little bit to the side there and just a little bit deep, but that should be an easy, easy two. And Stone flirting a little bit with those trees on the, on the right-hand side. Great positioning there. All of them right in the putting circle. <laughs> All right, so down at the green, you can see that basket on top. It doesn't matter. I actually think further away is better on baskets like this because you get right up close, especially me. I'm super short. I don't have any kind of angle whatsoever on them. And now good birdies for all three. And a little comedy ensuing. <laughs> Now for probably the hardest hole in the course, 379 feet straight uphill. You probably really need to have 500 feet of power to actually get it up this hill to the basket. And not only that, you have then woods on both the left and right hand side and a narrow fairway. This is a tough, tough hole. So starting out again, we got Scotty making a good, oh, Cracked a tree there, and that is in the left hand, sorry, the right hand rough. This angle kind of uh, disorienting a little bit. Luke, that just fighting through everything on that side. That actually is not a bad position, and Stone didn't quite catch it. It looked like it probably caught an early tree, actually. But this is uh, Scotty, and that is right to the base of the second hill. That is perfect positioning. And this, I guess, is Luke's. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's just on the other side of the hill. And it looks like we missed Stone's uh, approach shot because this looks like is a putt, his third, just a little short. A three on this hole is just is great. Scotty lining up the forehand, man. Just hunting those baskets. That was a great run. Luke lining up his putt. I don't know if it hit. You know, there's that netting on the side of the trees. I don't know if maybe if it caught that because that thing, it looked strange. It looked good out of the hand, but had a really weird finish. So unfortunately, that will be a bogey frame. All right, so now we're on to the official hole one, getting out of the woods. Now these guys can open up a little bit. The only real trouble on this hole is that there is an OB volleyball court down the middle of the fairway. This is Scotty with his drive. Looks like he gets caught up in those trees there, gets knocked down. That's actually a really good position. Uh, it sets up a simple up and down for a par. Luke, holy, makes it through. That is a smash, and that's over the volleyball court OB. Not even close. Wow. Wow. Stone throwing his a little bit lower than Luke's and Heiser's out. And actually, that's right on the original hole two's tee pad. So now you got Scotty lining up that forehand. And whew, just gets around that corner. Should have about a 25 foot for his par. A little bit wide on the approach for Stone, but still should be within about 20. And Luke with the best drive. What an open shot at the basket. Perfect approach. All right, so now Scotty with his par putt. Oh, wow. Tickles the left side chains. Oh, my goodness. That, that opens the door a bit here. 
He had a two-stroke lead for much of this round, and now all of a sudden, with just about three holes to go, as long as Luke can hit this, Luke is back one and John Stone back two with three holes to go. All right, he does hit his bogey putt at least, but wow, that it definitely tightens things up a little bit now, heading into uh, hole two. A pretty straightforward hole, just straight ahead, about 330-ish feet, just a few trees in the way. Luke now with the door open. What can he do with this drive? Oh, that was looking so good until it hit that tree. Could have really put the pressure on. Stone trying to get back into it here and throws it a little bit low. So how is Scotty going to respond now that his lead was cut in half? Kind of following Stone a little bit further up the fairway, but still a low drive. Again, kind of leaving that door squeaked open here. And Stone, oh, that's unfortunately not going to get it done. Scotty has to put this close to put the pressure on Luke. Oh, <laughs> how close is that off the band? Oh, man. And Luke, he's got his trusty bite. Trying to float it up there a little bit. Left it a little short, a little meat on the bone. Big tester putt. Boom. Luke, he is such a great putter. My goodness. Looks like we did miss Stone's upshot, but that's going to be a bogey for Stone. Pars for Luke and Scotty. Still tight at the top. Scotty up by one on Luke and has stretched his lead to three over Stone. Here's Luke with the drive on four. A roller? I did not expect to see a roller on this, but look, makes it to the base of the hill. That is almost pin high, just about 35, 40 feet to the left of the basket. Now if the pressure on Scotty for a good drive, his is leaking to the right. I don't quite think it made it maybe to the woods there. It'll really be interesting to see what kind of lie he has. As Stone tosses it out to the middle of the fairway to give himself an easy approach for an up and down for a three here. Stone lining up that uh, forehand of his. He puts it right up to the basket. Should be an easy tap in. Scotty leaning out for his approach. Hits the bricks in the stairs, but it stays up. Now this is huge. Luke, a jumper for the tie. Oh, just a little off the mark, but it didn't roll away. All of them are going to be tapping in for their par. So we're going to go to the last hole. Scotty up one over Luke. The final hole is all downhill, but you have a 90 degree turn towards the basket. This is a tough hole to two. It's all about positioning. You have to get a great tee shot. This is Luke to put the pressure on Scotty. And Luke oh, hits the last tree before it opened up. He's in the middle of the fairway, but that, if Scotty can peer this, Beautiful forehand, looking good, looking good. Makes it all the way down about 50 feet away from the basket. That might just wrap it up as uh, Stone throws into the bushes. Luke now has to throw it in pretty much over a forest. So what does Luke the Magician have in his bag of tricks for this shot? Looks like a grenade that he's throwing here and... It hits a tree and falls down harmlessly to the ground. Now all Scotty has to do is just lay up and tap in for his championship win. Scotty from 50 out. And in typical Scotty fashion, he runs it and almost cans it. He's hit so many baskets today. Luke taps in for his par, Stone for his, and here is your champion tapping in. Congratulations, Scotty. Scott, Scotty, champion. Thank you. So, Scott, Scott, we slowly slid like, older and older away, too. Yeah. <laughs> Good win, buddy. Thank you start. very much. Okay. The mediocre Coffee. mom. Coffee. Woo! You can drink your coffee like right, a champion. Your All right. All right. All right. Pat, you got it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, Pat. Okay. Sweet, Pat. Okay.
Mike for not being here. You got me fucking shit, man. What the fuck? You guys are like, you guys are like, you champion? Rich. I'm champion. How about our advance? Be right. Be right. Be right. Two people who weren't supposed to play. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, and our pro champion. For Scotty Tucker. Scotty Tucker. Guys, big round of applause for our pro champion.